So today we're doing a first look at Grandstream's GWN7615 enterprise level access point. Now, if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe and make sure you hit that little bell also so that you're alerted to when I release some new content. I'd like to thank Grandstream for sending me this unit for my review. However, they're not sponsoring or paying me for this video. All of the comments you hear are my own. Let's take a look at the feature set. You got 175 gigabits per second aggregate wireless and two gigabit ethernet ports. You got dual band 3x3 multi-user MIMO. It's got auto detection of PoE or PoE+. It supports up to 200 plus concurrent Wi-Fi devices, up to 175 meter coverage range. It's got advanced QoS. It's got an anti-hacking secure boot and critical data control lockdown via digital signatures. And it also has an embedded controller that can manage up to 50 local GWN series access points. There's a GW cloud for unlimited management and also a GW manager which offers on-premise software-based controller. Inside the box, you get the Grandstream GWN7615 access point, the wall or ceiling bracket, another bracket for use in drop ceiling environments, and a package of mounting screws. Now, when I bought the 7630, I also got a quick setup guide and some warranty information, but that was not inside the box with the 7615. Looking at the front of the unit, you have the Grandstream branding on the front. You have status indicator lights on the inner ring. Now the unit is quite large. It's about six inches in diameter, give or take. Now I know my camera is making it look a little elongated from top to bottom, but it is perfectly round. On the rear of the unit, you have plenty of ventilation. You have your slots for where your mounting bracket snaps into place. There's a reset button located in this corner here. You have your two gigabit ethernet port. The first one is just a regular LAN port and the other one is LAN slash PoE port where you can power up the unit. That being said, let's get this unit powered up and take a look at the UI. So I have the 7615 powered up and ready to be configured. It's got a nice purple status light on the inner ring. I'm gonna be taking you guys along for the very first time for this initial setup. Now, I have set up the 7630 in the past, but that was a while ago, so things could have changed, we'll see. Getting into the unit for the very first time for initial setup could be done a couple of different ways. One way would be to use the Grandstream GWN Discovery Tool, which can be downloaded from Grandstream's website, and I'll show you that in just a sec. The second way would be if you knew the IP address, just point your browser to the IP address of the device. And the third way would be to use the device's MAC address. The format for that would be https colon slash slash gwn underscore the MAC address dot local. So that's the method I'm going to use because the GWN discovery tool is a PC based program and I'm using a Mac in the studio. The ISP router that's here located here in this location is an all in one that I don't have admin privileges to. So my other option, the only option I have left is to access it using the Mac address. But let me show you real quick where to get the GWN discovery tool if you are using a PC. So if you come over to grandstream.com and go to the support tab, come on down and click on tools. And then on this page here, you can see this is GWN discovery tool. There's a link to download it to your local hard drive. That being said, let me point my browser to the Mac address using that formatted address that I mentioned before, and then we'll get you started into the UI. So we are at the GWN7615 login page for the very first time. It's asking for the username, which is admin, the password, which is located on the rear of the unit on that sticker. And then it's asking whether or not you want the device to be a master or a slave. So the Grandstream access points can act as masters where it has a built-in controller inside and then you can add other access points to it as slaves. In this case, we're gonna leave it set to master and do it as a standalone. So let me put in the credentials. Now I took a picture of the actual password from the bottom of the unit on my phone because with my aging eyes, I really can't see that small print. So I'm gonna get that entered for you now. Okay, so we're signed into the GWN7615. We're presented with the setup wizard, so we're going to go ahead and click Next. 
and here it identifies the access point. You can see the MAC address, the IP address that's been assigned from the DHCP server on the router, current firmware, and the status is master. So we'll go ahead and we'll say next. And now we could configure the SSID. So we'll change the name to QuickTech. 7615. We'll leave everything else the same. We'll come down to the pre shared key. We'll just change that. And the device is already uh, part of the member devices area. So we'll go ahead and we'll say complete. And that brings us to the dashboard and it's updating the services. Okay, so now we're at the dashboard. So we have the one AP online you could see here. We don't have any clients. To the right, it's showing the channel distribution. In this area here, it says top APs. Well, we don't have any data here yet because we just booted up. Top SSIDs, again, same thing, no data. Top clients, here you have an alert notification area. So the interface looks the same exactly the same from when I set up the 7630 a few months ago. The firmware version is 1.0.19.15 and I know for a fact that that is the current firmware version. Let's click on access points and let's go to status. And here you could see the GWN 7615, the MAC address, the IP assignment, the status, the firmware version, the uptime, the channel assignment, the channel width, the wireless power, and we don't have any clients at this point. Under configuration, we could select the device and then we can choose to upgrade, reboot, add to SSIDs or configure. If we look at SSIDs, here's the wireless network that we set up during the setup wizard. It's a dual band network. It's not using VLANs. It doesn't have a schedule at this point. And it's not using the captive portal. Interesting, it's got a captive portal. Okay, I, I guess I didn't pay attention to that when I set up the 7630. Let's click on the edit icon. And we can come in here and then we can just adjust the settings of the actual wireless network. You could use client isolation. That's pretty cool. Wireless client limit. Configure the limit for wireless clients. If there's an SSID per radio on a LAN, each SSID will have the same limit. So setting a limit of 50 will limit each SSID to 50 users independently. Well, that's cool. So you could actually set the number of a limit to the number of clients that could connect to an SSID. Awesome. That's really, really cool. Can enable a schedule. I'm not exactly sure what that is. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it optimizes the SSID for VOIP. Okay, very cool. Let's cancel that. By the way, if you like this content, please hit that like button. It lets YouTube know that you like what we're doing here at the channel. Now, let's get back to the video. Under the client tab, obviously we don't have any clients. Let's click on access control. Under the access control area, you can create access control lists, time policies, bandwidth rules. So for example, if we click add a bandwidth rule, we could select all of the SSIDs or just a particular SSID, and then we can limit the upload and download speeds. That's really, really cool. Let's take a look at the captive portal. I'm going to have to play with the captive portal and see how it works uh, since it's built right into the access point. Under radio, okay, here we can set some of the settings for the actual radios themselves under the 2.4 and the 5G bands. You could set the channel widths, the channel locations, the channels themselves, the power. Very cool. 
Under security, it says Rogue AP. Nice, you can enable Rogue AP detection. That's really, really cool. That's a great feature to have. It's actually got a built-in firewall on the AP It's where you can set outbound and inbound rules. I'm going to have to play with that and see how that works. Under service, there's obviously a hotspot 2.0. They say it's beta. You can set up SN, SNMP and DHCP. Let's look at the system tab. Under settings, it looks like you can configure the status LEDs on the front ring, always on, always off, or set them to a schedule. Here you can set your time zone and your, your time server, your date format down here. You could set a reboot schedule. That's really cool. And you could do a hardware reset. If we click here on the account tab, okay, it looks like you can change the current, current administrator password to something that's a little easier for you to remember instead of always having to look down at the bottom of the unit. But that's cool, that's here. Let's see, under mesh. Okay, so you can configure it as a mesh point, I guess, under here if you enable the mesh. Okay. Under schedule, I guess here is where you would set the actual Wi-Fi schedule. Let's look at maintenance. Under maintenance, here's the firmware upgrade. So I know that this is no longer accurate. I believe the new firmware server URL is firmware.grandstream.com. So we'll change that and we'll come down here and we'll save that and we'll apply that. So let's go ahead and try to upgrade. Now I know that 1.0.19.15 is current, but let's just run the upgrade and see what happens. Yeah, the same version, the version upgrade is not necessary. So we are up to date there. You can connect to a syslog server. That's very cool. And then you have your alerts here. You could set up email notifications and then choose the type, different type of alerts that you wish to receive. So there's the first look at the GWN 7615. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Be sure to stay tuned as I'll be doing more videos as I become more familiar with the Grandstream ecosystem. If you found any value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of my other videos up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share the video. And I want to thank you guys again for using my Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.